Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be taking a look and reviewing the Air Cobra airbrush from Ammo of MIG. And I want to say a huge thank you to Ammo of MIG who sent me the airbrush out for review. If you check the description box down below you'll find a direct link to their web store and you can go and find out even more information about this airbrush. Okay, so uh, first of all um, it comes with a little uh, pamphlet or booklet if you will. And it's just going over uh, very, very briefly how to use the airbrush and also the components that make up the airbrush. Okay, so taking a look around uh, the tin that the airbrush comes up, we can see that the packaging is absolutely fantastic, as you can see. And if I just uh, read out some of the key features of this airbrush, so it's a gravity feed dual action airbrush. It's got a 0.15mm nozzle, it's got a 5ml uh, cup, it's got PTFE Teflon seals which is very good if you want to use lacquer paints. Uh, so that's a long uh, lasting uh, material components. It's a uh, controllable spray uh, pattern range is down from 0.4mm uh, up to 4.5cm and um, it's got a controllable trigger, uh, reversible spear tip uh, guarded air cap uh, which we'll show you uh, shortly. Okay uh, without further ado let's take the airbrush out of the packaging. So first of all we have a uh, tool to take off the airbrush cap. Just remove the rubber protective seal that's on the front of the airbrush and as we can see um, it's a beautiful looking airbrush the gold and the chrome together looks absolutely fantastic and as you can see it's engraved with Air Cobra and Ammo as well uh, I really like the trigger mechanism on this airbrush it's got really good deep cut out grooves so it's really comfortable for your index finger or your thumb. I know some people actually use their thumb to airbrush with but uh, me personally I find it more comfortable with my index finger uh, on my left hand because I'm left handed. Um, it comes with a rubber uh, airbrush uh, cup lid and it also has, if we can just zoom in, a protective needle cap uh, that's got the horns which I really like this design it means that the airflow uh, can come out without being hindered by the needle cap uh, but it's still going to protect the needle but this is reversible this can be taken off if I can just do it on camera don't want to drop this you see guys and just put it on like so and it's reversible as you can see there. Uh, I wouldn't recommend actually Jax I wouldn't recommend you sorry about that by the way guys I wouldn't recommend using the uh, needle cap in that uh, way uh, because you risk uh, damaging the very delicate 0 0.15 needle now can I Screw it on. I had to stop the video guys, it was too fiddly trying to show you how to do it on camera. Uh, but there you go, I've uh, screwed the needle uh, protecting cap back on. Um, towards the back of the airbrush we can see we've got a cut out here, now this is brilliant if you get any sort of blockages you can just use your finger to pull back on the needle chucking nut and that will free up any debris towards the front of the airbrush there which works out really well it's also got a very handy paint limiting system so if my airbrush wants to focus and I just dial this in you'll see that it will come closer to the needle chucking nut which will limit the travel on the trigger so you can get exact uh, line weights out of the airbrush every single time using 
the paint limiting system at the back of the airbrush which is a great free, a feature to have I should say uh, so all in all um, the airbrush straight out of the box it's got some great features uh, apart from looking absolutely wonderful uh, the next part of this video guys is we're going to test it out so we're going to spray some paint on a miniature and see how it copes okay guys so here you can see that i've sped the footage up just a little bit times two i believe and i'm using the air cobra brush by ammo of mig and i'm doing what's known as pre-shading here so i've placed in some acrylic black pre-thinned airbrush paint into the airbrush cup and as you can see it's able to handle this tax really easily I'm able to get some really fine lines and uh, it's working really really well for me the uh, Cobra airbrush at the moment I'm working at about 20 psi and I forgot to uh, secure the miniature to the base properly there and as you've seen he just fell off um, but yeah back to what I was saying I'm working at 20 psi and just methodically going around all of the miniature making sure that it's uh, shaded I'm pulling a bit further back from the model now with the uh, Air Cobra airbrush and I'm just adding some subtle shadows here I'm coming back in with my base colour which I believe is called uh, the Fang by uh, Games Workshop which I just thinned down with some regular water to uh, spray over the model and uh, it's covering up most of the pre-shading but that's not a problem because I'll be doing some post shading and post highlighting as well which basically means you're highlighting and you're shading over the top of the uh, base colour I'm just finishing it up making sure I've got the base coat all covered over the stone troll from Atlantis miniatures there and uh, now I'm coming back in with a mix of a light grey tone with the fang and it's creating a highlight and I'm just working on the top surface of all the muscle groups and making sure that I leave the other colours behind in the shadows what I really like about this Cobra airbrush is that it's got those horns on the needle cap so I can actually see where the airbrush uh, paints exactly going to go when I get in super close to those muscle groups and uh, I think the uh, needle caps a really nice feature on this airbrush so uh, here again just adding more highlights and I'll be coming back in in a moment and I'll be using a flesh tone on his chest area just to break up all of that uh, grey colour and here you can see I'm adding some uh, flesh tone to his chest which again like I just mentioned a second ago is going to break up all of that grey colour and as you can see it's painting out of the Cobra airbrush really really nicely so as you can see guys I'm just painting using the flesh tone on his chest there uh, what I'll do now guys is I'll pretty much wrap this video up and I'll just go over some of the key features on this airbrush so it's got a 0 0.15 needle nozzle set which is absolutely fantastic at getting down ultra fine details on the miniature um, I really like the paint limiting system on the back although I personally wouldn't need to use it as I've been using airbrushes for a long time if you're new to airbrushing and you want to get those weight, uh, line weights down uh, as thin as possible it's a great feature to have on the airbrush as well as with all reviews guys it's important to uh, highlight the positives and the negatives and if I'm honest there's not really any negatives to this airbrush apart from the fact that it's a quality airbrush and it's quite expensive 
Also, I'm not a big fan of the rubber lid. I would prefer a metal lid, lid on this type of airbrush as it would uh, last a lot longer than a rubber lid, but I'm sure they're very, very cheap to replace. So that's not a big problem at all. Um, as regards to the quality of the airbrush, absolutely fantastic guys. I was able to get down some ultra fine lines. I was able to get down some medium spray patterns when I was base coating the miniature and uh, I think it performed really, really well. Uh, so uh, let me know what you think of the Air Cobra by Ammo of MIG in the comments field down below. I really wanna hear your thoughts, guys. It's uh, important that I do get your feedback on these types of reviews. If you own the Air Cobra, please let others know what you think of it as well in the comments field down below. And once again, thank you to Ammo of MIG for giving me this opportunity to review their wonderful uh, new airbrush. So please check the description box down below and you'll find links to their web store. And uh, lastly, thank you for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.